Okay, good morning. Uh, lovely Melbourne morning here. I'm with Nick from the Cheer Squad. Nick, hello mate. Nice to meet you Terry. Very good to meet you. I'm, I'm very well. Uh, this is really episode one of a new series we're having here on Blue Broad called Carlton People. And so what I wanted to do is, uh, first of all, allow you to introduce yourself. Yep. And I want to know a little bit uh, about your Carlton story, I guess. Okay. Um, well, I'm Nick. Um, a lot of people, at least Cheer Squad people, know me as that guy that doesn't shut up. That guy? Um, my Carlton story kind of starts from a very early age. Um, I kind of had no choice in the matter, not that I would choose otherwise. Um, a, my cousin was married to uh, one of the Coonerhands, David Coonerhan, and I was page boy at their wedding. So growing up in a, Fun fact. In a family with Coonerhands at a wedding with Justin Madden and Craig Bradley and Steve Savani, I was hooked. And from an early age, I was that kid that would always be uh, writing the stats down and uh, overanalyzing games. And I can tell you who the left footers were playing for Fitzroy and, and Fremantle back in the day. Um, always been a nerd for footy. Um, but yeah, Carlton's been my life as long as I can remember, going with my dad to Princess Park. Um, and then when I turned about maybe late teens, early 20s, my dad stopped coming to the footy. Right. So once we left Princess Park, that kind of broke his heart a bit. Um, and it's taken him a while to get back, but he comes to the footy a bit again. So it was because of the move you got a little upset at it? Yeah, wow. so a, a lot of people of that generation, a lot yeah. of boomers, they kind of often hear it's not the game I grew up watching. Yeah. Um, he's one of those sort of people. I see. Um, so I was kind of a nomad in need of adoption, and I found that in the cheer squad, yeah. um, as have a lot of other people. Yeah. We're kind of, uh, we're like the Raggy Dolls crew, we kind of all the lost all the lost boys in Neverland get together, Yeah. and um, we find a new family to come with. Yeah, we, we spoke about it last week, and you were telling me very briefly some of the stories of some of the people that come, yeah. and uh, a little bit about the community, and, and to be honest, I was probably probably a little naive to, to how much of a faction and how much of a community that you really oh, have there. Uh, I mean, obviously I go to games and I see you guys do your thing and it's yeah. a very important role to play. Yeah. Um, but it's so much more than just going to the footy with totally. your mates. I mean, tell me a little bit about what does a week look like uh, yeah. in a lead up to a game and what does that do with community? Yeah, well, community is the word. Um, a lot of people like will join a church or a, or a local footy group or a netball club um, because they need that place to belong. Um, and I think that's the same for all of us. Yeah. Uh, whether you sit in the cheer squad or whether you're a social club member, a lot of people become friendly with the people they sit near and you become um, familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, and that bond is only that, you go for Carlton. That's brilliant. Um, um, we have diverse backgrounds, socioeconomic, religious, sexuality, whatever it is. Um, people coming together, we've got Serbs and Croats who sit next to each other and have the best time. Yeah. We have people of all different religions having the best time together. Um, for no other reason than we go for Carlton, yeah. we're thrown together. That's the beauty of, probably just more on a high level, that's the beauty of sport. Oh, yeah. like I'm, I'm a sport nuffy yep. and it's, it's that, Absolutely. it's exactly that. I can go into that pub over there on a Saturday night yep. and if I'm going to watch Carlton or Arsenal and I meet someone who's also following those teams, we'll instantly bond and that's... Exactly. There's something, I mean, there's a lot going on in the world. There's politics and there's, yep. you know, wars and there's conflict. Absolutely. Sport's that one thing that brings us together. Yep. Obviously, we're here focusing on Carlton. So tell me a little bit, maybe give me a, a specific story of yours and what it's done for you in your life Big time. Uh, with the bond. Yep. Um, so uh, without giving my entire life story, yeah. <laughs> um, I am someone who suffers from mental health and anxiety issues. Yep. Um, and the footy's my happy place. It's yep. my escapism. Completely um, comfortable. Oh, it's the best. So yeah, good. For, one so example good. I can cite, um, we played North Melbourne at Eddie Had or Marvel uh, several years ago and it was multicultural round. Yep. And I remember seeing in the, in the bay next to the cheer squad there were uh, bands or people commissioned by the AFL playing music and they were playing drums and um, uh, playing musical instruments and dancing um, of like a South American sort of vibe going on, Latin sort of feel. Yep. And we lost by about 70 points. But everyone had the best night of their life. Because yeah. everyone said, what the heck was going on? We're dancing all night, we're having a party, and it was great. Well, that happened to be the day that there was a plane shot down over the Ukraine. It happened to be that day, the yep. MH17, whatever it was. And I remember walking into the ground, and a lot of people were really scared and upset, thinking, oh, we're about to go to war. What's going on? There were Australians on the flight. And then I realised as I had left the game, walking back to the train station, I got on Facebook and I saw this flood of negative, awful stories and everything. And then I realised that for three or so hours, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. 
Um, we could have gone to war and I wouldn't have known. Yeah. And then I got quite emotional. So I realised what footy meant to me. It's escapism. So footy's meant to be fun. Sport's meant to be fun. Um, so we don't know what people bring to the table. Everyone's got their issues. We do with Monday to Friday. Um, for me and many others, it's mental health stuff. Yeah. Um, footy's an opportunity to forget about it. So if you've got young teenagers especially, especially while Carlton's losing, it's not as easy to front up. We're an emotional we're an emotional club, oh. starved of success, um, and it's a melting pot when we lose, and we absolutely. lose badly, yeah. But for young families, and we hear stories of young people, um, I'll say to a certain family, hey, I'll see you next weekend, and they say, well, maybe not. Um, our daughter, who's in year seven, doesn't want to come next week because she gets bullied on a Monday morning because Carlton lost. Um, so then I said, it's my responsibility and ours as a cheer squad, okay, let's provide an environment that win, lose or draw, everyone wants to turn up to. Let's make it an atmosphere of fun, of inclusion, of community. And I think that belonging is what gets so many people coming back. So good, so good. Yeah. Focusing on the year, that, that was huge. hard to believe it's, it's come and gone. That happened. It was, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just like, um, I'm, I'm left frustrated, <laughs> mm. but proud. Yep. I'm left wanting so much more. Absolutely. How did you, how was the season for you? It's ironic in that I and we all shouldn't be settling for a seven win season. Correct. But there are so many positives to take out of it. Um, you look at some of the young guys, especially. Um, if anyone had told me what Sam Walsh would bring to the table 12 months ago, I heard that he was Every number one pick, you always hear, oh, they're going to change the game, they're a special one. Um, and a lot of these top draft picks, you see that. I don't think anyone saw what Walsh would bring to the table. Um, the development of Harry Mackay, he might frustrate people with his set shots some of the time, but the way he competes and crashes backs and his contested marking is huge. He added more to his game. I know he didn't kick yep. goals, uh, yep. and I understand the frustration, yep. the kicking, and it would be great for him to have kicked 35 goals, 40 goals, yep. but... He was able to impact games for longer by providing a, a link-up target up the ground. Huge. And I think toward the end of the year especially, had he have had someone like a Charlie Kerno there as well, it would have been that extra get-out kick. He was the get-out kick from a you know a defensive 50 rebound. Um, but then they just needed that extra string with the bow. And someone like Levi Casbolt, the Renaissance man, no one would have seen that coming. 12 months ago, had you have told us that now we would have had Casbolt, um, Simpson and even Dale Thomas, unfortunately he's left, yep. but these sort of guys playing the seasons they did. I don't think our list management would have necessarily saw that coming. Um, Mark Murphy, who's my favourite player, anyone Same. that wants to listen, <laughs> I've, def I've felt a need to defend him for several years against the people who are negative. Same. Um, and then as a result, when he turns it on like he did this year, I feel the need and responsibility to gloat and shove it down Absolutely. and up and as well. Absolutely. Um, we, had a, uh, we had a segment, we had a, an award show the other night, yep. and uh, Dan and I had a, a, a moment or a segment where it was what I got wrong and what I got right, and yep. Murph was the one that I got right. Absolutely. Because you cop it. You, when, you, when you have an opinion that's maybe not viewed in the same light at the time, Absolutely. it ends up becoming right, uh, you've got to be able to withstand the, the, the heat. Huge. And I, and I got it wrong as yeah. so many people. Um, yeah. I'll put my hand up. Those that know me know that I was one of the, um, the naysayers for Jack Silvani. Yep. Um, nice. Halfway through the season, we, nice. went to, we were at the Frio game, so I didn't miss a game this year, and my finances aren't thankful, but it was worth every second. Worth every second. Um, the Frio game is something that a lot of us will never forget, for those who were there. Um, at half time in that game, he started forward and he kicked a few, missed a few shots early on. And I remember thinking at half time, we're in this game, if not for a few missed opportunities. And I was cursing Jack, and I was saying, oh, he's got all the right tools just never strings it together and really frustrating. Sure enough, he moves, new role. He's a challenge given to him. Go on to Matt, Matt Fife, here's something new. And ever since, I think he's he doesn't fumble all of a sudden. He doesn't go to ground. He, he's so just strong. added the, the strength yep. in his hips. And it's probably the first sign that you see of him and most players when they go to that next level is their inability to go to ground when they get tackled. I think it's confidence as well. It yeah. looks like someone playing with confidence. Yeah. There's certain times, I think you've mentioned doesn't go to grand. There was a St Kilda game the other week where he, there was one where he got tackled and you just had the core strength to stand up in it, yep. get the handball off, led to a goal. Mm -hmm. um, little things like that. Because um, I think you, you start your career, for him, yeah. you start your career being thrown around. Of course. And you need some time to realise when you do actually get that strength that you had to actually use it. And I think the one thing he's actually unlocked now going into 2020 is, mm -hmm. right, I know that I can 
I can withstand a tackle now, totally. I'm on to the next thing in my career. And I think, he, just the little things, I think he's almost found a place to be comfortable yep. and a role. Yep. Um, and that's the same for so many guys. Um, Matt Kennedy's another one, he's found a role. Yep. Um, I think the biggest issue with him was, okay, well, is he fast enough to be a midfielder? Is he, you know, he's got a bit of height about him. Playing that third forward and a bit of a defensive forward at times role, I think he's, I don't know the exact stats, but to my knowledge, since T took over, he was involved in more score involvements than anyone. Indeed. Um, things like that is these players who were on the fringe 12 months ago have stepped up. And not that we're wanting to be relying heavily on the likes of Doherty coming back and making an instant impact, but they're the kind of cherry on top at the moment because so many blokes have had that awesome development this year. Um, but having said all of that, it's now up to these guys to continue that. Yep. Um, we've seen glimpses of Dave Cunningham. Well, okay, can he stay in the team long enough? Um, we've seen glimpses of what Tommy Williamson can bring. Can he get on the park? Can he get on the park. If those sort of guys can step up again next year, then yep, we will have that natural development that we're aiming for. Yeah. Um, but a lot of hard work still has to go on. We can't be resting on our laurels and accepting a seven-win season. Absolutely not. Because, I mean, the, the, to be honest, the... The pressure was off us in a sense because it's like, all right, you're not making finals, now just go out and have a crack. Totally. That turns from round one next year. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bit of expectation yeah. on Tiggy. You know, the club has come out pretty publicly and said that whoever the next coach is going to be, it's got to be someone that can impact grand. right away. Totally. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. What are you, what are you looking forward to the most you know, next year? Is it a certain player? Is it a game style? What is it for you? Um, yeah, a bit of the game style. Yeah. Um, a lot of we've been reliant under the Teague era so far on the likes of Murphy and Ed Kuno going into the midfield, um, those big bodies. I'm really hopeful that, okay, we've given those younger guys all the experience earlier in the year and that has to hold us in good stead um, without having to rely on the trade window and, and free agency and stuff. Um, I think there is enough talent there in the midfield to have some natural development, but I still think um, we need genuine pace, we need small forwards to step up. Um, in terms of a particular player, um, someone who's had a bit of a lean year by a lot of people's standards, I think Zach Fish has got a bit more to show. Yeah. Um, he kind of looked like a bloke, maybe the change of position, he played a bit forward later in the year and seemed to struggle. Um, the Gibbons inclusion probably hurt him a little absolutely. bit. Well, there's undeniable talent there. Yeah. There's undeniable talent. And I think that someone like that, if he can take the next step, that's another string to our bow. Yeah. Um, and the other player individually, uh, Sam Petrescu, see, yeah. is exciting. Um, the move to halfback was uh, quite inspired. Yeah. Um, reminded me a bit, at the moment, I've seen similar sort of vibe of Lewis Jetter at West Coast. That lethal disposal by foot yeah. off half back. You can make those 45 degree kicks in board that just totally open up play. Um, and on the rebound, we look quite dangerous certain yeah. times. Um, I think it again was a St Kilda game maybe. Um, there was a kick that came off half back, ends up in Murphy's hands, kicks over the back to McGovern. And we had so much run and then 10 to 15 seconds from one end of the ground to the other. And I haven't seen Carlton do that in 10 years. Um, that's going back to the days of Chris Yaron and Dennis Arnfield and Andrew Walker, sort of these running machines. Um, when I see that sort of stuff come back, I thought it's more than just frontal pressure, lock the ball in there and keep a goal. There is the ability for us to score from half back, from stoppages, from turnovers. Um, so there's a, yeah, it's up to Teague now. That's right. Um, the, the tools are there. Show us more. Yep. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, mate, thank you so much for your time. I Absolutely. really appreciate it. Um, let us know what you thought about, about this segment. And if there's anyone out there that would like to have a chat, I'd love to feature you all. Uh, this is episode one of Cult of People. Awesome. Thanks for having me. In. Awesome content. Everyone should be getting around this sort of stuff. Um, we have had a few lean years, but seeing people like Terry and a lot of others creating um, unique content and Carlton specific content is awesome. And I think that it's something that we can all enjoy, but everyone should really get around it and share it with all your Carlton mates. Appreciate it. Thanks, mate. Not a problem, man.